Okay, this is a uh, Power Stop X36 brake kit that we're going to install on my 2015 Toyota 4Runner. This is a limited edition 4Runner, but I believe they're all the same. The uh, Pro and the SR5 and the Trail. I think they're all the same brakes. Okay, this is um, pretty simple. Just a few things. We need a uh, 17 millimeter socket, and we also need a 13 millimeter socket. The caliper here has this thing and this thing. We're gonna remove those, and we're also gonna remove the pins here, and the pads pull right out. The uh, brake job on one of these is literally a five minute job. Once you pull those pins out, the pads slide out. You could slide new pads right in and put them back together, put the wheels on. So that's pretty nice. Um, designed by Toyota to make the pads really easy to change. So in order to remove the pins, we start by pulling this guy out, pulling this guy out with the ends of the pins it comes right off. Now, the Power Series brake kit does not include another one of those long pins. It includes here two cotter pins, which instead of this long thing, we're going to put the cotter pins back in. I like that design better. I like cotter pins better. Okay. So then at this point, we're also going to use a pair of needle nose here. Pull this sucker right out, comes right out. This one here also comes right out. Okay, that's it. Now, this front pad here, just gonna literally pull right out that's how quick a brake job could be just replace that thing slide another one back in pins all done I'm gonna set that off the side okay now this this back pad here if you looked at your power stop extreme series pads here you'll notice two of the pads have these little prongs hanging down off of them the front pad here does not have the little prong hanging down off of it so the pad in the back is the one with the prong hanging down and you want to make sure See the prong is at the bottom of the pad here, just like prong at the bottom of the pad here. The kit has two of these and these are reversed, so the other pad has the prong on the other side. So and you can even see here on this one they have another spot for the prong to hang on the other side. So they use the same blank, they just throw a different prong or they just throw a little prong on either side whichever side they need it. So you just want to make sure that the prong goes back on the right side. So that one comes out. Alright. Now to since we're doing not just brakes but rotors also, we need to go ahead and pull the rest of the caliper off. So we're gonna use our 13 millimeter on this little bolt up here. I'm sorry, it's 12 millimeter. Gosh, I said 13 all the way back at the beginning of the video too. It's 12 millimeter, sorry about that. Okay. Now, we have two kind of 
bigger, fatter bolts on the back side here that we're going to remove. One of them is this one right here. The other one is this one right here. There's like a couple of other ones back here too. You don't want to mess with them. Just this one here and this one here that's in between the lines. Okay, so those we're going to remove. Those are 17 millimeter. There is a metal brake line here. You don't want to, you don't want to be careful with your wrench so that you don't um, just bang into it and bend it. And these are kind of long, the rear one has two on the back of the caliper. They're a lot shorter, so a little bit longer. And then this bad boy down here. Okay. okay. Now my caliper is starting to come loose here. I need to go grab a jack. I'll be right back. Okay. So this caliper is fairly substantial. I mean, it weighs. 20, 25 pounds and it's got these little metal brake lines and we removed the little bracket up here so you don't want to just let it hang loose so after I get all these threads out we're gonna set the caliper on the jack stand here help support it Just like that, okay? Now, already our caliper, our, rot our rotor here is loose and ready to come off. It has two little holes here. That's so that when I put the new caliper on, I'm going to line those little holes up there with those. This is the new power stop one, as you can see, drilled and slotted. And power stop is nice enough to mark here. Front driver side, hopefully you can see that. So I need to pick that sticker off. Said, line up the holes, the little holes in between these, just like that. Now, I am going to stick one lug back on here. Just to hold our rotor real nice. Okay. All right. Now we're ready to reassemble all of everything else. So we're going to take channel locks, and I need to depress the plungers here on the caliper.
this real slow, real nice and gentle. They kind of pop each other out a little bit, so just kind of work them back in. Perfect. All right. So at this point, we are now ready to reinstall our caliper. Finds a hole, there it is. Okay, so now that one's in. This is only the second time I've done this. I did the other wheel, and then now I'm shooting the video. So, for somebody, this isn't like something I do all day, every day. This, the holes are real easy to find. It's not. This is not difficult to do. Like I mentioned, lots of threads. So I'm gonna try to thread it in. So now our little bracket up here, we're just going to go ahead and pop that guy back in. Has a little tooth there that, that goes into the side. Okay, so once again, that's this guy right here. It's got a little tooth there. The tooth goes in, tightens it down. No big deal. Then back here, we had this one that we put in. And then we've got the one down here. Also, this one. Okay, so we're going to tighten all that down. So this guy here. Okay. Once again, being careful of the metal uh, brake tubes, the metal brake lines, don't want to damage them. I'm going to take these big guys here and give this a little whack. Okay. Okay, so we got our screws back on there. Now we are ready to install our pads. 
I'm gonna go ahead and grease these up. Power stop was, of course, nice enough to include a thing of thermal grease here. little bracket hanging down so this one goes at the back at the bottom. Just like that. We don't want to jam it in all the way. The uh, the edge of the pad actually kind of lines up with the edge of the rotor here. And we're gonna grease up the second pad here real quick. Sorry about this. Okay. Oh, this one is going to slip right in here. Just like that. Okay. Now, we are ready to reinstall our little pin holder. It goes like that. It sticks right in there. Then the pin goes right through. And right through. Okay. Same thing up here. Pin. Goes right through. Goes right through the other side. Now, the last thing we're gonna do is install those two cotter pins. Like I said, it originally came with this pin. We're gonna put cotter pins in instead. Okay, so obviously my battery died right then. So at this point, we're going to install those little cotter pins. There we go. Okay. All right, I'm gonna pull them all the way through, even though they reach the first little bump. I don't want them coming out of there. So, cotter pins are installed. One there, one there. That obviously keeps these bad boys from coming back out. All right, that right there is brake job, 2000. 15 Toyota 4Runner. This is our for all 5th gens from 2010 to 2000.
15 currently. So, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed. Hope this helps you. It's real simple to do. Anybody at home could do it. Like I said, 12 millimeter wrench, 17 millimeter wrench. Socket. 12 millimeter socket, 17 millimeter socket. That's it. Put the wheel back on. We're good. Thank you. Okay, so I just want to show here what it looks like. You can see the uh, wheels back on. Calipers, rotors. Everything's all good. Nothing even comes close to those rotors. At least on these 20 inch rims. So, not to worry about anything. And we're all good. Thank you.